Welcome to the Working After Retirement video. This presentation will provide you with an overview of when, how, and if you can return to work after you retire. Before we get to the main presentation, let's take care of some housekeeping items. To provide you with a future reference and make your note-taking easier, we've provided a presentation learning guide. You'll see the link to the learning guide in the YouTube description box. Please note that due to the large number of participants, although the chat feature is active, we won't be able to respond to member questions during this presentation. If you have any questions, please contact us directly. Our agenda will cover several topics, including working for a non-CalPERS employer, going to work for a CalPERS employer, and reinstatement from retirement. Let's start with working for a non-CalPERS employer. As a retiree on a service retirement, you can be self-employed, work in private industry for a non-CalPERS employer, or work for an employer that qualifies you for membership in another California retirement system without limitations or restrictions and your CalPERS pension will not be affected. If you retire under a disability or industrial disability, you can be self-employed, work for a private industry employer, or work for an employer that qualifies you for membership in another retirement system or for a non-CalPERS employer and will continue to receive your pension, but there are medical restrictions. Your employment must be in a position significantly different from the one you retired from and cannot include duties or activities you were previously restricted from performing at the time of your disability retirement. If you're under the minimum service retirement age and are performing duties similar to those from which you were found disabled, you may be reinstated from retirement after a reevaluation. As a disability retiree, and if you retired under the minimum service retirement age, 50, 52, or 55, depending on your circumstance, you will be subject to an earnings limit. You're required to report your employment gross earnings to us either on a monthly or a quarterly basis. The total employer paid portion of your monthly retirement allowance and your new gross earnings can't be greater than the current compensation of the position from which you retired. If the total is greater, your retirement allowance will be reduced dollar for dollar. Once you reach your minimum service retirement age, your employment is no longer subject to an earnings limit. If you're an industrial disability retiree for a non-CalPERS employer, your retirement allowance is not subject to the earnings limit, even if you're under the minimum service retirement age. So what happens if you're retired and want to go back to work for a CalPERS-covered employer? Under a service retirement, there are three main ways you can go back to work for a CalPERS employer. As a retired annuitant, as an independent contractor, or terminating retirement and returning to active employment, also known as reinstatement from retirement, which we'll cover later. If you're retired on a disability or industrial disability retirement, you may have the additional option of returning to work in a permanent position with an earnings limit restriction instead of the retired annuitant restrictions. Let's first look at the most common option, which is working as a retired annuitant. A retired annuitant is a CalPERS retiree who works as an at-will employee for a CalPERS employer with certain restrictions on their employment. This means in order to continue to receive your retirement benefits, there are restrictions on the work you can do for a CalPERS employer. There are two types of retirement annuitant employment, extra help, and interim or acting vacant position employment. Examples of an extra help position include eliminating a backlog, working on a special project, or work in excess of what regular staff can do. If it's a vacant unique position, such as a city manager or police chief, you can work in an interim appointment during the employer's recruitment for a permanent hire. In this case, you cannot start work until after the employer has opened a recruitment for a permanent replacement. You cannot be employed in any regular staff position such as a seasonal, permanent intermittent, exempt from civil service, or any other temporary position other than a retired annuitant position. The hours you work cannot exceed 960 hours in a fiscal year, which is July 1 through June 30, for employment with all CalPERS employers combined. There are no exceptions to this limit. You and your employer are responsible for tracking your hours to ensure you don't exceed this limitation. 
The hourly pay rate you receive cannot be less than the minimum or exceed the maximum paid to other employees performing comparable duties as listed in the employer's publicly available pay schedule. Calculate your hourly pay rate by taking the monthly salary and dividing it by 173.333. Also, you cannot receive any benefit, incentive, compensation in lieu of benefits, or other form of compensation in addition to the hourly pay rate. For example, vacation benefits cannot be provided to a retired annuitant. Before applying for work with any employer, it is your responsibility to ask if they contract with CalPERS for retirement benefits and inform them that you are a CalPERS retiree. You should also specify if you're retired on a service, disability, or industrial disability retirement. In addition to the restrictions we just discussed, there are two additional eligibility requirements that you must meet. First, you are not allowed to return to work for a period of 180 days after you retire. The waiting period begins on your retirement date. There are specific exceptions listed in our Employment After Retirement publication, which is Publication 33. For example, if before you begin work, your employer certifies the nature of the employment and that the job is necessary to fill a critically needed position sooner than 180 days. The governor may include additional exceptions in an executive order. In addition to the 180-day wait period, there is a bona fide separation of service requirement, which we must comply with in order to maintain our tax-qualified status as a 401A defined benefit plan. This applies if you are younger than your normal retirement age. When we talk about normal retirement age, we're talking about the oldest age listed for all of your retirement benefit formulas up to age 62. This means that if you retired under the 2% at 55 formula, your normal retirement age is 55, or if you retired under the 2% at 62 formula, then your normal retirement age is 62. So, if you retired younger than your normal retirement age, the following two conditions must be met. You can't have a verbal or written agreement to return to work between you and any CalPERS employer before you retired, and you must have a separation of service of 60 days between your retirement date and the date your employment as a retired annuitant begins. All retirees who are under normal retirement age at retirement must meet the bona fide separation in service requirement even if an exception to the 180-day wait period applies. These two requirements may be served at the same time. The only exception to meeting this bona fide separation is during a declared state of emergency, for example, disasters due to floods, earthquakes, or worldwide pandemic. Service and disability retired members can log into their MyCalpers account to view their 180-day waiting period expiration date and also view their retirement letter with the 180-day waiting period information. To return to work with the CalPERS employer and remain retired, you must apply for retired annuitant designated positions directly through the employer. The employer is the one that decides whether or not to hire you. Once you're hired, both you and your employer are equally responsible for ensuring your employment remains in compliance with CalPERS law. You want to make sure your employment doesn't jeopardize your retirement benefits. Another way you may be able to return to work after retirement is as an independent contractor. You can be employed as an independent contractor, a consultant, or an employee of a third-party employer, including your own business, without restrictions if there is no common law employer-employee relationship between you and the CalPERS employer. If the work you'll perform is the same or similar to work you performed as an active employee, or is work performed by an active employee of that employer, an employer-employee relationship exists and the employment is subject to the retired annuitant restrictions. If you believe that you're working as an independent contractor and it's later determined that you're actually an employee and that employment violates any of the retired annuitant restrictions, your retirement will be terminated. Independent contractors are not employees and are excluded from membership in CalPERS. A true independent contractor, consultant, or third-party employee is someone who contracts to provide a service or complete a specific task. We use many factors to determine whether a position is truly an independent contractor position, including the manner and means by which the work is accomplished. 
before you begin employment as an independent contractor, send the proposed independent contractor service agreement to us for review. We'll review the contract within 60 days. After you retire, you may serve as a true volunteer for a CalPERS employer in a position that is never paid. You cannot volunteer to work in a compensated position where someone is normally paid for those duties, and you cannot volunteer to avoid meeting any of the working after retirement restrictions. In addition to all the rules and restrictions we mentioned before, those retired on a disability or industrial disability to retirement are also subject to additional requirements and restrictions. Your employment must be in a position significantly different from the one you retired from and cannot include duties or activities you were previously restricted from performing at the time of your retirement. If you retired on a disability and are under your minimum service retirement age, you'll be subject to an earnings limit. Your minimum service retirement age depends on when you were hired in active CalPERS employment with your employer and is either 50, 52, or 55. Once you reach the minimum service retirement age, your employment after retirement is no longer subject to the earnings limit. Those retired on an industrial disability retirement are not subject to an earnings limit for work as a retired annuitant. Disability and industrial disability retirees may have the additional option of working for a CalPERS employer in a permanent capacity. Again, your job duties should differ significantly from those required in the position from which you were retired. The position should not be the same position or in the same member classification. To work in this capacity, you must receive our approval first. There are forms that must be submitted and will need a copy of the prospective position's duty statement. You can find the forms on our website. If you're approved to work, you'll be required to report your earnings to us and your retirement will be subject to an earnings limit. We've just talked about some of the rules and restrictions for working after retirement, so you may be wondering what happens if your employment violates any of these rules. Any retiree employment found to be in violation of the retirement laws and regulations is unlawful employment. This will result in your mandatory reinstatement for retirement retroactive to the date the unlawful employment began. If reinstated, your retirement allowance will stop and you will be required to reimburse CalPERS for the amount of retirement allowance you received during the period of unlawful employment. In addition, you will pay your employer the member contributions plus interest owed retroactive to your reinstatement date. The employer who unlawfully employed you would be required to pay employer contributions plus interest owed retroactive to your reinstatement date. Before you start working, we strongly encourage you to read the Employment After Retirement publication, which is Publication 33. This publication will provide more details and information not given in this presentation. I just stated that reinstatement can be a consequence of unlawful employment after retirement, but there are times where you may want to voluntarily reinstate into active employment. Reinstatement means you come out of retirement to work for a CalPERS employer as a permanent employee. You receive regular paychecks, earn service credit, and make contributions to CalPERS, just as you did before retiring. Your retirement checks stop until you decide to retire again. If you're reinstating from service retirement into active employment, are currently working as a retired annuitant and want to accept a permanent position with another CalPERS covered employer, you must notify your current employer. You can't be an active permanent employee and a retired annuitant at the same time. You must have a firm start or hire date from your CalPERS employer. Your employment start date is the first day you actually return to work. You also need to submit the Reinstatement from Service Retirement Application Form, which you can find on our website under Forms and Publications. Prior approval is not needed before you start working. Once you receive your completed application, we'll confirm your start date with your employer and provide you written confirmation of your retirement end date and reinstatement start date. If your start date changes or you decide not to return to work and you've already turned in your reinstatement application, you must notify us immediately to avoid any disruption in benefit payments. If you retired on disability or industrial disability, you must have approval from CalPERS before you can reinstate to any CalPERS covered employer. 
The reinstatement process can take three to six months depending on how complete your reinstatement application packet is and whether you will be sent for an independent medical examination. You may request a specific reinstatement date, but the effective date of employment cannot be prior to the date of CalPERS approval. Submit the reinstatement from Disability or Industrial Disability Retirement Application Form. It can be found on our website under Forms and Publications. The reinstatement process and required documentation varies depending on the employer you retired from and what position and employer you want to work for. You can review the reinstatement for retirement publication, which is publication 37, for more information on what other forms and documents will be required. You should be aware that if you reinstate and then retire again, your new retirement may not include the same benefits you had with your previous retirement. If you currently have CalPERS retiree health coverage and reinstate, that coverage will be canceled when you reinstate. You'll need to enroll as an active employee for health benefits with your new employer or obtain other health coverage. You should ask your prospective new employer and us if you'll be eligible for retiree health coverage when you re-retire. If you received a golden handshake, which adds years of service credit to your calculation as an incentive to retire, this benefit is lost when you reinstate and will not be included in your calculation when you re-retire. This could cause your future retirement benefits to be lower than your current retirement allowance. Cost of living adjustments, or COLA, are typically paid beginning the second calendar year after you retire and compound annually. The longer you've been retired, the higher the compounded factor. When you reinstate and then re-retire, your COLA is paid the second calendar year after your new retirement date and is based on your new retirement benefit. You do not retain the compounded factor from your previous retirement. This could cause your future benefit to be lower. Reciprocity is an agreement among public retirement systems to allow members to move from one qualified public retirement system to another qualified system without losing some valuable retirement and related benefit rights. One of the advantages of reciprocity is that we can use the other system's higher pay rate to calculate your CalPERS retirement benefit as long as you retire on the same date. If you retired with reciprocity and we used the other system's salaries to calculate your CalPERS retirement benefit, reinstatement breaks the concurrent retirement. This means your CalPERS retirement will be based on your CalPERS salaries when you re-retire. There are other things that can be impacted by your reinstatement, including unused sick leave conversion calculation, current temporary annuity benefits, and current community property claims on your retirement allowance. So we highly encourage you to read our reinstatement for retirement publication, which is publication 37. This publication also includes re-retirement calculation examples and more. This video will stay posted here on YouTube so you can come back and catch what you might have missed. All our previous videos are also available on our YouTube channel. You'll also have access to the link for the learning guide. Our presentation today was intended to provide you with information on working after retirement. Please note that CalPERS is governed by the Public Employees Retirement Law. The information in this presentation is general. The retirement law is complex and subject to change. If there is a conflict between the law and the information presented in this presentation, all decisions will be based on the law. Later today, you'll receive an email with a short evaluation. Please answer all of the questions as it's important for us to get your feedback to help us improve these presentations. Thank you for taking time out of your day to attend this presentation, and have a great day.